folks, I have not seen my first guest tonight since they were sitting on stage with me on election night. Please welcome the host of Showtime's The Circus, Mark Halpern and John Heilman. <laughs> That he hugged me. Well, you need you, you still need my hand. you still need comforting from election night, Stephen. I was, uh, afraid, I was afraid if I hugged you, I'd need to cradle you in my arms. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're not a big comforter, yeah. and I will tell you why. Because the last time we were here together, um, this is what you said. I asked both of you what I thought the election meant. Uh, I asked both of you what what you thought the election meant, and uh, this is this is what you guys said. Donald Trump staged a hostile takeover of the Republican Party on the right. And now we are where we are, which outside, is... Outside of the Civil War, World War II, and including 9-11, this may be the most cataclysmic event the country's ever seen. Um, well... <laughs> Happy we'll times. be right back after this message from Calgon. <laughs> so, I, I might okay. have understated it. <laughs> so... But in all seriousness, do you see... In all seriousness, on a comedy show. In, in all seriousness, do you, do you see anything in the first 45 days that is sort of the fruit of, of that moment that you were sort of picturing when you, when you imagined this as being a cataclysmic thing I don't, I don't want America. to minimize the loss of life at 9-11 and, and in the wars. Obviously, that's, that's it's a step beyond anything that's happened. But if you think about how this has convulsed the country and that it was from the point of view of half the country who voted against him in his upset about his being president is a, a self... A little more than half. A little more than half. It's yeah. self-inflicted. <laughs> self I've traveled the country a lot since he got elected and, and has been president. And there are people who are hopeful and optimistic and really think this is the kind of change we need. Mm -hmm. And there are people who, adults, who, who say, to, say, say to me, this is the worst thing that's happened in my life. Well, okay, so the first season of The Circus uh, was about the campaign trail. And, and now the second season, which starts, is it this... Week is, from Sunday. Week, week from, from Sunday, Sunday, is about the first 100 days of the Trump presidency. Did you know you were going to do a second season, or did you get to the end of the first season and go, oh, <laughs> the story just started? Can you... Can you can, I can, we use that kind of language on the show? Sure, sure, sure. I'll edit you out. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I, I think we were, we were really happy with the way the, the show progressed over the course of the year. We thought we made something that was really good. We were really proud of it. I think it's possible we could have done a second season of it if Hillary Clinton had been elected. But it is the case that, you know, in, in journalism, that novelty is a compelling thing. And everything that's happening every day, every hour, every minute in Washington right now is, a, is new. And the novelty of it made it pretty much impossible to not go back for a second bite at the apple. Trump's Washington and Trump's America is a fascinating thing. And the, and the first half of the 100 days, we're sort of joining in progress. You can go anywhere in America. This is what people are talking about. Certain late-night shows that are focusing on the Trump administration have been doing quite well in the ratings, I read. Mm -hmm. and, and... I gotta check those out. I gotta check those out. Now, let me ask you this. Both of you guys... Both of you guys with, like, 20 years of experience writing and covering politics. What do you know as Washington insiders, if you pardon the expression, what do you know about what's happening inside the White House? Because there are a lot of rumors that it's chaotic and this is sort of like the gang that can't shoot straight and there's a lot of infighting, that sort of thing. Is that real or is that an illusion so some other, some other trick is being pulled off over here that we're not paying attention to? People keep asking us, like, what it's like, what's really going on behind the scenes? And my first response to that always is, have you noticed what's going on in front of the scenes? <laughs> If, if there's that chaos, that's the part that is planned, mm -hmm. mostly. That's the part, that the, the image they're trying to present. Right. Imagine what it's like in the private spaces. But during the campaign, there was all this... That, that, that the they don't want you to see. There was a sense in the campaign, like, oh, these guys don't know what they're doing. They can't plan a campaign. They don't have any digital... Meanwhile, they're very quietly planning the possible path to win, and they did it. Yeah. Is, that, is that happening sort of under the radar some right of, now that nobody's paying attention to? Some of that's to? happening. They're doing more on foreign policy, more on health care, more on taxes than is generally covered, and they are trying to be below the radar. Every new administration is chaotic. Right? I covered the beginning of the Clinton administration. It was the same thing. People walking around trying to figure out, like, how do I, how do I plug in a floppy disk? Right. Back then they had floppy disks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now they're, they're, they're trying to figure it out. So it, 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 it's not as chaotic as it seems, but make no mistake, at the top of this pyramid is Donald Trump, and he has, throughout his career, thrived on 
chaos and a management style that is, you know, a little unorthodox. And most of the government is still not staffed. Yeah. I mean, there's still, you know, 85% of the appointments that they have to make. The people have not been appointed yet. Let well, they alone said they confirmed. had to hire 4,000 people. Yeah. Huh? Right. It's, it's just most of the government's not at the highest level. The most of the government is still uh, has a vacancy sign on it. I was there the other day talking to people in the West Wing, and I, I would ask them, people I knew, people I just met, how many times have you been to the White House before you took this job? More than half. It was the first time they went to the White House was the day they showed up for work. That's a that's a hard thing to do. It's a it's a lovely building, but it's a complicated building. <laughs> yeah, um, I heard that they had trouble finding the light switches. The light and... switches, how to work the doorknobs. It's a complicated building. It's not as complicated as healthcare, but still quite complicated. <laughs> Appar apparently, I feel like. I'm starting to get the feeling that like everything in Trump Tower must be automated or like voice or voice activated because <laughs> all like, of Trump Tower is on the clapper. Like really, like, <laughs> light switches and doorknobs should be pretty much standard everywhere you Alexa, go. Alexa, buy a building in Abu Dhabi. How how do you guys, as political writers, how do you cover something like the tweets on Saturday morning saying that the previous administration, Barack Obama himself, had ordered taps of Trump and Trump Tower? What, how seriously do you have to take that? It's the president of the United States. You, you have to accept that as a news story, but how much do you have to take it seriously as a news to investigate? Well, one of the things that got said in the campaign at the end that I think is a total canard was that... Um, we, I, don't we, speak French, <laughs> I don't speak French. You'll, you'll, fit right, you'll fit right in in the Trump administration, Stephen. Um, they don't speak French there either. Was this notion that we, that we are failing was that we took Trump literally, but we didn't take him seriously. And that people in the country took him seriously, but didn't take him literally. The, the president of the United States should be taken seriously and literally. And when he's on Twitter and he's saying the things he's saying, those are public pronouncements by the president of the United States. Our, our, our allies, our enemies, foreign uh, the international markets, they all take it seriously. So as, as, as often unsubstantiated and often as nuts as some of the things he tweets are, of course we should take it seriously. But is and, there a and, more serious accusation that any president has made no, about a previous president? No. No. If true, what would be the consequences of Barack Obama having done this? Well, he should go to jail because he would have broken the law. But he didn't do it, so he shouldn't. And 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 Trump and Trump hopefully soon will be through the process of the investigative committees that are taking place on Capitol Hill. We have a hearing now scheduled for a couple weeks from now where Jim Comey is going to come up and testify publicly, and hopefully Trump's lie in this case, which it almost certainly is, will be exposed to the world. When I daydream now, I daydream about what if Nixon or, or JFK had Twitter. What they, would have, what, what, they would have, what they would have done with it. Like if JFK had Trump's attitude about Twitter, just tweet everything. Right. JFK imagine? might have had an Anthony Weiner problem. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, have to dis you'd have to disable the photo thing on Twitter for Kennedy. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, do, you, do you think the health care plan is going to pass? This form of it is going to pass uh, in, in any way? I think it doesn't kick enough people off the health care rolls to please most Republicans, so no. Okay. I think it's got but if they actually do that, <laughs> yeah. isn't it also dead on arrival because they know that it will be yeah. a different form of bloodbath in two years? I wish they'd try to figure out a plan that some Democrats could support because I think one of the mistakes President Obama made was doing health care in a partisan way. This plan, they're going for all Republican votes. There's going to come a moment, first in the House and then in the Senate, when, we're doing a little schoolhouse rock here, when they go to the House and they say, what all presidents say in this situation, my presidency is on the line. If this goes down, my presidency is over. It's an existential crisis. You have to vote for it. And I think they've got a chance to succeed because Republicans will face no choice. If they make the perfect, the enemy of the good, if they say, I don't like this health care bill, I want something better, it will go down. And I think that would be a huge problem. If they fail on health care, I'm not sure they can restart the engine and try to get anything done. I think it's very unlikely that Obamacare is going anywhere. I, I, I think you know, this is like one of these things where this is where governing happens. It's like you can spend eight years or six years saying, not only saying you're going to you're going to re repeal it and replace it, but voting to repeal, not never to replace, but to repeal it. And now the reality of the situation is that there, we've seen what's happened in the last two days. These divisions among Republicans, I, I, and I understand what Mark's saying about what Trump might or might not do, the divisions among Republicans are really profound. And the idea that there's going to be a common ground where Senate, relatively centrist Senate uh, senators and, and the, those on the far right in the House are going to be able to get together on this, it just seems really unlikely. If it passes, have us back in the day in the signing ceremony, we'll bring donuts. It's a deal. <laughs> okay. Mark. John, good to see you. you. Season two of The Circus premieres March 19th on Showtime. Mark Halpern and John Heilman, everybody. We'll be right back with Michael Ian Black. Stick around.